guys, <laughs> and welcome back to Review Right. Or if you're new here, thanks for stopping by. I hope you guys enjoyed that fancy intro. And today we're gonna be going over the $65 Unicrew Toga Dive. Now, these were released a short while ago, and it's a pretty chunky pencil. It's one of the hugest mechanical pencil innovations of the century, and a lot of people actually refer to it as revolutionary. I've written over 50 pages with it, and I'm actually really excited to give a review on it today. So first, we're going to go over the selling points with my standard mechanical pencil evaluation sheet. Since this pencil was made by Uni, it has the trademark Unicrew Toga lead rotation mechanism, where basically it just spins, and you'll see throughout this review that what they've done in this pencil is just cram as much as they can into this tip portion. Um, so if you can see, I know it's not very well color coded, but there is a, an orange circle. And if I press on this tip, then it, it goes away. And that's because it's rotating on the inside. And it's actually rotating this lead as well. And that helps with um, keeping your lead sharp. So if I write like this, you can see that the lines are very thin. So it keeps your, your writing condensed and it just makes it a lot nicer to write with because it doesn't take up as much space. So that's our first selling point. And the next one is going to be this rubberized grip, which is just a fancy way of saying we put all of our money into this, so you just get a regular rubber grip. So this one, it's not really something special, and I don't know why they decided to focus on it in their marketing material, but it's there, so it's going up here. I don't know why they wanted to focus on that, especially when there's other things that are much more impressive in this pencil. But next we have the most important thing in this pencil, which is the automatic advancement. So this pencil's main feature is that whenever you're writing, you will never have to advance the lead. So you're never gonna click this except for the first time you're using this pencil when you let out that first bit of lead when you refill it. You might be thinking, this has been done in other pencils. How is this revolutionary? Well, this is the best application of it that's ever been produced. And actually, I'm a big fan of it. It has five levels, as you can see here. Um, on the tip, it has max, mid, and min. So I can just change it however I want. So say I want it to have just as little lead as possible. Well, I would just pinch this back in here and then put this cap back on, which actually leads me into the next feature, which is the cap. It's a magnetic cap with a metal clip, and actually, whenever you put on the cap, since it's magnetic, it talks to this little contraption in the pencil, and if I take it out, you'll see that the lead dispensed on its own. So you have lead here, and you'll just be able to start writing from the get-go. So super quick, and a very ingenious feature that I actually really like. So that's three features that I'm gonna be writing down. So these are our selling points for this pencil, and it actually comes in blue, orange, and green, which is a surprising array because it's just a more collector pencil. And it's $37 in Japan, but since what Uni is doing is releasing these in such little quantity with high demand out there, um, so the supply is low and the demand is high, so you can actually find these not on regular sites like Yoseka or jetpens.com where most higher-end mechanical pencils are sold, but actually on eBay because those places are sold out. So it's actually $100 to $150 resale, which is just insane, and I, I would not recommend that anyone buy any mechanical pencil for more than $60, which is what this pencil costed. And even $60 is kind of a stretch. But we're going to talk more about that later in the value for money section. So first, we're going to be going over comfort. And you may already be thinking this is not going to go well because of this rubberized grip, and you'd be right. So it's very hard and kind of tactile with little squares. Um, you can see that there's, there's these tactility squares, um, but it's definitely underwhelming. It's also a kind of light pencil, but it's still comfy all throughout the grip. In terms of, you can still write here it's comfy, and you can write here, and it's close enough to where you have a good amount of control over the pencil. Um, it's a big grip, 
So if you're more used to those smaller grips of, say, like the Rotring 500, which is about half the size, then you may not like this pencil. This pencil also has what they call rubberization, which doesn't do much of anything, which I touched on earlier. So it's gonna, gonna go one out of five in terms of grip design and a one out of three for material quality. So the pencil body is good and the rubber is scratchable. So that's why it got a one out of three in material quality. So it gives it a two out of eight in comfort and Although I forgot to do this before, obviously this pencil falls under the $40 category, which is why I'm giving it a more hardcore and critical review. So another thing I wanted to focus on before I move on to functionality is that the cap, although it fits nicely on here, and if you heard that snap, let me do it again, um, it actually magnetizes to the end of the pencil. But the unfortunate thing about this, because it looks so cool like this, and I would love to write with it in this kind of form, it is so uncomfortable because when you do this, the weighting goes all towards the back. It is super uncomfortable to write like this because the ideal pencil weighting is more towards the tip. In fact, it's more recommended to keep it towards the middle and tip section. And what's actually happening is it's towards here instead, which is the exact opposite of what you want. So that's not going into the comfort category, but it's just something I wanted to talk about because you're just gonna have to put this cap to the side if you wanna write like a normal human being. Next, we're moving on to functionality, which is where this pencil will probably shine. We'll see. Um, it has a squishy button, um, which is kind of weird, but I'm not really gonna talk about that. I just wanted to point it out because most buttons have this kind of sensory input where you can hear it and feel it whenever the lead is brought out. Like if, if I bring this right near the mic, you can hear it. But this one is squishy, not that it matters because you're probably never gonna have to hit it, except for the first time obviously, but I just wanted to point that out. As I said, I wrote more than 50 pages with this in the past, and I've only had one jam because of overfilling, which is actually the first thing it says not to do in the instruction manual. But who reads those anyways? So it is kind of hard to get inside the pencil, but if you, if you try hard enough, you can just unscrew this and boom, we have all these internals. So I'm not gonna try to mess with this because quite frankly, I'm too scared to do something catastrophic to this pencil and risk it being broken. But it's gonna do really well in repairability and reliability because of that. So it's gonna get a three out of five, and just a few more points I wanted to focus on were the adjustability and the cap feature, which really help with the reliability because it's just something nice to add onto the pencil. And also the point that this pencil, just like many other crew togas, is bouncy. And what I mean by that, is whenever you put this pencil on a piece of paper, the tip is going to have a little bit of a depression before you actually are able to write. So if, I, if I'm like this, I will have to push on it a little bit and you will feel a little bounce because of that crew toga mechanism rotating the lead. But it's really easy to get used to and if that's kind of a pet peeve for you, then a crew toga like this might not be for you. But another thing is that the pipe extends mid-word sometimes if you've been writing for a long time. So say I was at like five pages of writing and the pipe just extended a couple millimeters and it just threw me off a little bit, but it's super uncomfy, but not common at all when you're writing. So it'll only happen if you're writing for a really long time. But we spent a lot of time on functionality for the repairability and reliability section. So let's go on to erasability. This one will be quick. Uni and decently sized erasers are worst enemies. So it is good quality, but it's gonna get a zero out of three because this is just awful. Look how tiny this eraser is. This is not gonna last, this is gonna last you a few words before you run out of eraser. So not good at all. We're already done with erasability, it got a zero. So pull out your notebooks right now because I have a formula for you guys. Um, it is expensive pencil plus plastic body equals waste of money. So this may seem pretty harsh to you, but I think if you're paying $60 for a pencil 
Whereas you could just go to Walmart and get a 50 cent pencil that will last you a while and be pretty reliable. This pencil is basically, in my eyes, made out of the same stuff. It's just plastic with some nice interior parts. So they definitely should have made this pencil metal. And for the price, it's definitely deserving of at least some brass in the pencil body. So it has a good clip, just some positives, so I don't feel as bad for just wrecking on this pencil. Um, it won't break, I, I'm pretty sure of that. It has no give. Um, if I put a bunch of pressure in that middle area, you can see that it doesn't bend at all. But definitely not for the price. I just think it's ridiculous that there's not even a bit of metal in this body. So it's going to get a 0 out of 3 and leave it with a 3 out of, th uh, out of 11 in functionality, which it only got a good rating in reliability and repairability. And I'm not sorry because uni we need to be expecting more of you because this is just unacceptable the way that this pencil has no metal at all in this body section. So finally, value for money. Besides the tip mechanics, the pencil is pretty average. Nevertheless, it's super impressive cramming um, of so many features like automatic advancement, adjustability, crew toga, and the cap mechanism into this small area, and that's basically what you're paying for, for the whole pencil. So it's going to get a 2 out of 3 for the amount of features, and actually a 5 out of 5 for the delivery, because what it said it would do good for, except for this rubberized grip, which... I'm just going to put an X next to because it's pointless. It's just fancy marketing term for regular plastic grip. Um, it's a pretty good pencil. So we're going to give it a 7 out of 8. I actually really enjoy writing with this pencil. I was just super, super strict with this review because I want to make sure that everyone understands what they're paying for, especially at this insane price range for a mechanical pencil. So it's going to get a 4 out of 10 just because of this plastic body and the little things like the eraser and the cap and again the plastic. I know I've been talking about that so much but it's really just important to me that a pencil is durable especially if you're going to be spending so much on it. So I do not think this pencil is a waste of money just to clarify. I just think a plastic body for such a high price is a waste of money but nevertheless I think it's a good pencil and you should only, only buy it if you're buying it for either the Japan price, which is $37, or the retail at somewhere like Yoseka, which is where I got mine, or Jet Pens. I would prefer Yoseka because they have the cheaper prices at $65, but never, please don't buy this pencil from those scalpers that like to, to sell it for like $100 or $130. That's just unreasonable. So this is my rundown of this pencil. I hope you guys enjoyed. I know I was pretty harsh, but that's my true opinion on this pencil. If you guys like this video, please make sure to like this video. It helps my content out and gives me more impressions so that more people see my videos. And if you want to see more content like this, please make sure to leave a subscription so that it motivates me to keep posting because I really do enjoy making these videos. And again, so I can keep growing my channel. If you guys have any suggestions for future pencil reviews, please don't be afraid to leave a comment. Um, I'll actually give you a shout out if I end up reviewing your pencil, which I probably will. And again, thank you for watching. Have an amazing day and see you next time. Bye.